My name is Dennis Gill with the Americans in Wartime Experience. Today's date is 10 June 2023. We're in Stevens City, Virginia. I've got the pleasure of speaking with Dale Beam. Thank you, sir. I appreciate you sitting down and talking to us. You're welcome. I know you had a little bit of weight out, outside. <laughs> There's no I problem. Appreciate that. Yeah. Uh, if you could just give us a little bit of background on who you are. Where were you born? Where'd you grow up, go to school? Yeah, well, I, I started school here in Virginia near uh, Winchester, and uh, but that didn't last too long when we moved to West Virginia. So I spent most of my uh, school years in West Virginia. Okay. And what service were you a part of? I was, I was a merchant marine for f six years, and then I got drafted in the army during the Korean. Okay. Carrying uh, on. Did you have any other veterans that are or members of your family that are veterans? Oh, oh yeah, I had two brothers that was ahead of me. Okay. And uh, yeah. And they they were in also in World War Two. Yes. My my oldest brother was a uh, was in the uh, they, he was trying being trained for a glider pilot. Okay. And uh, they found a heart murmur in him, and they sent him home. Wouldn't let him do it. So my other brother, uh, Dwayne, he he was uh, a couple years younger than the older brother, right. and he went he went in on Normandy. Oh wow! Okay. Yeah. And uh, was was wounded four times in Europe during the Korea, during the European War. So um, he got out, and by that time, I, w I wanted to so bad to get in the military. Tried Army, tried Navy, tried everything. Wrote letters, and uh, I was on the farm. The only one on the farm could work horses, and uh, man, they was working me to death. I said, I got to get out of here. I got to go to the Army or something, you know. Right. So uh, I, w I just kept on writing letters. And finally, I got a, a note back from the Merchant Marine uh, Organization. And they lost so many seamen by the German submarines, and uh, uh, they they was taking anybody and everybody. You could have been 95 years old, and they, they took you as a seaman. So I, I wasn't that. I was a here. I was a 15 year old kid, and uh, so finally, when I became 16, and my parents had signed the papers, and I went in the Merchant Marine. What what do the Merchant Marines do? They simply are an organization that hauls cargo. Okay. We don't fight. We, we haul cargo. Anything and everything. I mean, we, we, we hauled bombs. We hauled plane parts. We, we haul, hauled oranges, sugar, flour. You name it, we hauled it. And, and uh, I took a couple months training in the Sheepshead Bay in New York when I, when I first went. And... Um, uh, then, then they then they assign me to ships. So, um, uh, my first foreign trip was uh, in Tampico, Mexico, <laughs> and of course I was I was only 16 years old, <laughs> and uh, we get it. Uh, the, the guys, everybody I went to shore with were 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 growing men, you know, right. and here I am, a, a, a little dumb kid. So I went into the, the, they had a Mardi Gras parade. I never heard tell of a Mardi Gras parade. And here we, we went to this parade this night. Um, about three or four of my buddies. And so they, they was going to have a good time. They jumped on a float. And I saw them going down the street on this float. And so here come a Model T Ford with a tailgate hanging down. And they were doing... Uh, uh, apple, apple cider on it, showing people how to make apple cider. So I just jumped up on the tailgate of that pickup and rode down the street. And the next thing I saw, my buddies were being taken down the side street. So when I when 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 I got up to that side street, well, they were down there a good ways, and I didn't know it looked like somebody in uniform was with them. So I just bailed off and chugged right down the street to catch them. <laughs> Here the cops had them. <laughs> so of course then they saw me coming and they said, hey you're part of this come on so uh got uh got in the police station and of course they started looking at our papers and stuff and they was writing up these other guys and they looked at my papers and here i'm only 16 years old and they said hey we got a baby gringo here <laughs> he took me over the door and kicked me in the butt and said get out of here kept them other guys i don't know for two or three days wow yeah before they got out but uh, they 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 were going to play full around. I was only sixteen years old, yeah. 
But to come to come to uh, just so happened the next day was my birthday, wow. and I turned seventeen yeah. the very next day. Yeah. <laughs> that was a great. It was a great experience. Yeah, you know, sure. I just had a lovely, lovely tour time. So this is during World War Two. Well, yeah, this forty five. So World did you do any crossings of the Atlantic or the Pacific? Or? <laughs> well, I only crossed the Atlantic thirty two times. Thirty two. Yeah. Okay. Thirty two times, crossings. Thirty two crossings. Yeah, uh, mostly was Liberty ships, C ones and C two uh, merchant ships, okay. and we we'll hauled everything in the world, everything. I was on one ship. We went into Dublin, Ireland. They they came in on the ship and built nothing but uh, corrals, just like a barn, and they loaded six hundred head of cattle. We took it to Antwerp, Belgium, unloaded them, went back and got another load, fifteen loads of cattle out of Ireland into Belgium. All of them were going into Germany because they, all, their, all their stock was, had been killed. Right. And uh, the, it was Lynn Lease, uh, American Lynn Lease. And uh, they, they, were, they were buying all these cattle and uh, trying to replenish their uh, stock. Right. And that, that was really something. Yeah. And, and these cattle, uh, I, here you're out in the ocean, <laughs> And here these cattle are bawling, you know, you hear them bawling. And that was un unusual for me, you know. Yeah. What's life like on a merchant marine ship? Oh, uh, it was good. We had good food. You know, we had a regular time. We went to work and regular time we knocked off. And you, you'd work a four hour shift uh, steering the ship. And the next four hours you'd be on the lookout, you know. And uh, then the next, uh, and then you'd have time off. And next, next shift you'd come on steer the ship and have your time at the wheel and the, and the big they had a big compass this big you know huge huge compass and uh, it of course they always tell you what what you're steering and you you steered that ship and kept it right on that course yeah it was just wonderful i just loved it uh you ever have any time where you were attacked by enemy or no sir no submarines no really? sir See, the world, world War uh, uh, Two was ending yeah. in Europe, and uh, uh, the, the only the, the only thing I uh, had with uh, no attacks. In fact, the only thing they would attack ships with was submarines, you know. But we went into Oslo, Norway, from Houston, Texas, on a on a voyage, and the first Western ship, American ship. To ever come into Oslo, Norway, or anywhere else in Norway, after the war was over, the Germans had just moved the German troops out of there and everything. Was uh, they they occupied Norway, Sweden, Finland, see, and uh, they had, they had, after the war they got the troops slowly getting out of the, their area. So we were the first American ship to go into Oslo, Norway after World War II. We had flour and sugar and food stuff. On that ship, and and they the, the the Norwegians would come down that ship by the hundreds, and just stand along the dock and look at us, just stand there and look at us. Walk back there and see that American flag, and they'd salute that American flag. Just so uh, I don't know, just so wonderful. Yeah, they were the nicest people in this world, in my opinion. What did you do for recreation on the ship? Read. Yeah, you know, if you could find something you hadn't already read, you know. Uh, of course, you didn't have brains enough to take stuff with you, you know. Um, I could have bought some funny papers or comic books, and you know, but I didn't have brains enough to do that. I just a new seaman, I you know. But um, somebody else was throwing away a magazine, well, I'd scarf it up and read it a little bit. But. It uh, just a wonderful, wonderful life. Yeah. Yeah. And how long were you a merchant marine? Uh, about six years. Six years. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, I went to about forty-five or twenty-five foreign countries. Wow. Yeah. Good experience. Oh my! And, uh, for a country boy, and my, I mean, I left them horses behind, <laughs> and I just couldn't believe this other world was out there. Yeah. You know, I'd never been in place, and. Uh, Grew up in Van Winchester and uh, then moved to West Virginia and didn't, didn't go no place. You couldn't go no place. Didn't have gas, you know, cars right. and stuff. 
So. So this this allowed you afforded you the opportunity to see the world and. Oh yeah. Meet some new people. Yeah. And have great experiences. I, I just love people in different countries, yeah. and and l learning some of their language and you know a few yeah. words, just unbelievable. And I was just I was just so dumb. I was just so, you know, I was back 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 country, and uh, the world is new world out there, and I didn't know it. You know, it's just so good. Did you have a favorite country? Oh, Norway. Norway. Oh yeah. Norway and Finland, I like them both. Yeah, yeah. And I've been a lot of them. I, I like I told somebody I've been in three countries: uh, Mexico, Canada, Mexico, and Cuba. <laughs> but I've been there all over. Why'd you get out? Why did I get out? Oh, the army! The army got me out of there. <laughs> that was a fun thing. I was I, my ship was in Baltimore. And I got noticed there to go for a, a, a physical examination for the U.S. Army. So I went, and uh, of course I passed it, I guess. So um, my ship pulled out of Baltimore Harbor for um, uh, Helsinki, Finland. <laughs> and so uh, there we went, and uh, it's a long trip to Helsinki on an old Liberty ship. Right. And uh, of course we unloaded and went to Sweden then, and then went to Norway and a couple other places we stopped and of course here I'm I'm I didn't know that they'd sent me the induction notice weeks before see and uh, um, when when a, when our ship got back into Baltimore it was I think the day after Christmas um, and uh, here this guy come on the ship and and went to the skipper and one gave my name said that we were looking for this guy and they said, well, we got him on our ship. We said, uh, well, we'll take you to him. So they did. They brought him down there. He said, hey, I got to talk to you, fella. I said, okay, what's going on? He said, well, you're supposed to be in the Army three months ago. I said, what? <laughs> he said, yeah. He said, well, you're going to go, but for six months, you're going to be in a prison. You're going to be in the stockade. <laughs> oh, my. Uh, that, that made me happy. <laughs> Here I'm going, and so they gave me five days. Said we got you got five days from today to get your business all tended to, your debts all paid, and your car uh, license renewed. And said you got five days. I didn't even have a car, of course, <laughs> but uh, he said, and you got to be at Fort Meade, Maryland, on second day, third day of January, I think it was. So uh, they gave me slips and papers and all that time and cost me nothing to go to Martinsburg and catch a train. <laughs> so I got there in Fort Meade and they, here was in four or five hundred guys, you know. And here they're, they're, they're doing us all. They're doing us all, running us through this, getting us in the Army. And uh, I'm waiting for them to come get me, you know. And I said, i got to serve three months or four months. And I'm just, I'm kind of just lingering around, you know. Right. And just a couple guys I got to know and tell them, I said, hey, I'm, I'm waiting to get arrested here. They're going to take me and put me in hoose cow. <laughs> and of course, that would have been a new, new, new thing for me. <laughs> another new experience. Yeah, another. <laughs> um, uh, so it, it went on. We trained and went all through all the motions. And finally, this one day said, they make one step forward. And all of us took one step forward. Now you're in the army. So here I am. So next day we started boarding trains for Hood, Fort Hood, Texas. Never heard a word out of them about going to Who's Cow. So you never went to jail? No. That's a good story. Yeah. <laughs> That's a good story. Yeah. I was a happy boy. <laughs> went down there and the only thing I saw was tanks. Okay. Army tanks. Went through basic training with army tanks. And it was just this wonderful, something new for me. Right. Um, all I saw was ocean and water and, you know, North Sea, Mediterranean Sea, every sea you can imagine, yeah. Gulf of Mexico. <laughs> and here, here I am in the Army. Oh, my. <laughs> so eventually you learned to drive tanks? Oh, my, yeah. Yeah, I wound up being a tank commander and uh, okay. had five tanks under my orders and setting them up and 
where there should be overnight and protection area and yeah. yeah. Where, where were you? When, were you over in Korea? <laughs> well, I was in Korea for a, a short time, and then I went. Then I was un, uh, for no unknown reason went to Japan. Okay. And uh, but you were in Korea during the Korean War. Yeah, yeah, yeah. How long but, do you think you were there? Oh, I was only there for uh, a few days. I don't, really? I don't okay. remember. Yeah. And why I don't understand it, but I uh, went to Japan as occupational forces in Japan. And that's the way it went. Yeah, what so kind of tank did you drive? Oh, uh, Sherman tanks, what we had. So good tanks. I loved them. Took all kind of training in them for months. Took a lot of training. And I, I only had six months on my two year listening. And I, they sent me over there. Stupid, you know. So no more got over there and got used to the place. Turned me around and came back and went home. <laughs> so you don't you know. No. Yeah. Tell me about the Sherman tank. Oh, What's it like being inside one. Oh, it's just wonderful. Yeah, you could just. I use it. I love. I love driving them. Of course, I had my own driver, but uh, yeah. I drove them. You knew how to drive. Oh them. my! Yeah, I drove many tanks, and just I just like the floorboard them just. Just go as hard as I could go. Yeah, I, I, every chance I get, I just go wide open. These, these tanks had a 500 horsepower Ford G, V8 Ford engine in them, and uh, and they they would really fly. We called it a tank of the Easy Eights and the okay. M4 A3 Easy Eight, and they were they would they would just they would fly, and. Uh, and we was going to take a trip, and I'd put my driver off the driver's seat somewhere else in the tank that I'm driving. <laughs> so I'd, I'd, I'd drive my own tank uh, most of the time. But uh, sometimes my, they'd transfer my driver somewhere else, and I'd have to train a new driver. But I loved driving them. Oh, they were just so nice. What, what's the crew of a tank? A uh, tank? Well, Five. Yeah, well, actually... Uh, you, you got the driver and the assistant driver, uh, the gunner, and the commander. Actually, okay. four would made the full okay. tank. And you were the commander? Yeah. What is your duties as a commander? Well, you, you told the driver everybody what to do over the okay. over inter, 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 intercom. Gotcha. And uh, if you, once your tank, tank stop, you tell you stop driver, and you know. And, yeah. and uh, but the other the other people, they 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 were just in there riding unless they we had something else to do. And where does your where is your position in the tank? I'd be standing up with my head out the turret. Okay. And uh, when uh, when I when I wanted to, I'd just drop down inside on a seat and pull the tur turret shut and latch it. And uh, stayed there till. You didn't have nothing else to do but get back up and go out. Any uh, any memorable incidents while you were in Korea? I know it was a very short time. Yeah, very, very, very short. In fact, I'd, I wasn't even in a tank hardly in that Never Korea. Tank. Yeah, it was just a, I don't know, it was a layover thing or something. Yeah. So you get to Japan, and your your job is now to do what? We're I don't war with Japan, obviously at this point. No, there was no war with Japan so at that time. So you're part of the occupation. Yeah, occupation forces. And what were you uh, supposed to do? Most of the time, I was uh, handling prisoners, just like that. I transferred from one place to another, a train or wherever. These are Japanese prisoners. Prisoners. No, no, these are American prisoners. Oh, our prisoners. Yeah, oh, yeah, and GIs. Yeah. What kinds of things were they incarcerated? I, I would never ask too much, too many, yeah. what their problem was. But, uh, uh, they, of course, I carried a 45 pistol and they they were in handcuffs. And, you know, I didn't, yeah. I didn't but they would, they would, uh, most of the time, they, they would give passengers, Japanese passengers on, on the trains. Uh, they'd, stick their tongue out at them, cuss them or something, you know. And I'd tell them, I said, I'm going to haul off and bust your mouth if you don't stop this, you know, because you're not going to do this when I'm, when I'm with you. After I'm gone, I said, you can do what you want. <laughs> <Right>. <laughs> so, 
you know, it just went that way till I, for a couple of months. And I'd, they'd send me someplace else and bring another couple of guys somewhere. So right. um, it was a good job. I didn't mind it. And uh, most of the guys were, were ranks ahead of me. <laughs> Some of them were officers even. Really? Okay. Yeah, yeah. They were just transferring them from one jail to another. But uh, when that was over with, why, uh, which was the last uh, couple months of my service, and uh, all of a sudden they said, hey, they, they wanted me to stay because Vietnam was coming up. Vietnam was coming up, and they was going to give me another stripe and all that, you know. And, and uh, I said, uh, just think if I'm going home, I'm going home. And, what rank were you while you were there? I was just sergeant on rocker. Okay. Yeah. So, it, I, I mean, I enjoyed it. I, I enjoyed it every day and I said, you know, that new life, you know. Yeah. Every day is new life. Yeah. And it was just. What, how did the, uh, did you have any interaction with the Japanese people? A little bit. Yeah? Yeah. How were they towards Americans? Well, everybody that I was around was, was very, you know, very nice to talk to, and no, no, no bad feelings toward each other. Right. Um, and and I, I just felt I loved those people because they didn't do nothing to me, you know, really. And uh, but but I, I I'm there as a conqueror, yeah. but I, I I wasn't there to kick ass, you know. Yeah. And and uh, so. Anybody that I was in contact with, I, I treat them with enough respect, and they did the same back to me. Yeah. yeah. How about the other GIs? Did they have any problems? Did any, any of them have problems with the Japanese? Or uh, not that I was around. No. Yeah, they all kind of felt the same way you did. Uh, well, I imagine they did. Yeah. 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 But it was very, very interesting, uh, and knowing that you know we dropped an atomic bomb on them, and uh, and they, they gave up the to fight and uh, it, yeah I, I felt I felt uh, compassion for those people just like in Italy when the Italians had been fighting us you know with the Germans and I'd I'd go ashore in Italy and then I'm just as happy as I could be with the Italians and they were happy with us really yeah. and I went to Italy all three or four different times on ships and uh, and Germany, I went in several ports in Germany, and uh, loved it. And they'd talk about the war. Most of the Germans would. Every downtime in Japan, we had any kind of recreation or, or entertainment or anything. <laughs> Camp Fuji. <laughs> if, you, if you wanted to climb it, you could go there. I think. Yeah. But all I'd done was look at it. I didn't. In fact, I was I was based what they called it, a thousand feet up on the side of Fuji, and Camp Shingle, no, that wasn't Shingle, that was another camp. But uh, uh, it, it was all right, it was good. But I, I didn't venture up on the side of the Fuji. <laughs> but some of the guys would, they'd, they'd go up there as yeah. high as they could go. Were you, were you married at the time? No, well, oh, yeah. yeah, I was married in Japan when I was in Japan. I got married just before I went to Japan. I see. Yeah. How did you... How did you keep in touch with your wife? Just letters. Letters. That's all. Yeah. 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 You didn't have any kids yet or anything? No. Well, my wife is pregnant. Oh, okay. I'm sorry. Yeah. That's it. Yeah. It was a good life. Yeah. Good life. The army was a good life. Merchant seamen. I mean, I loved that water. I loved that water. I didn't want to. I didn't want to go in the army. <laughs> no, I, I was I was very upset going in the army, but after I got there, hey, I was oh, man. I just loved it. I loved the army. I really did like being a soldier. And I don't know the guys. Uh, I had a marine that was uh, our first sergeant when I first went in the army, and he was a real good guy. I and mean, he was smart though. He he taught you the marine merchant the mer the marine corps way. And and that was good, yeah. And uh, 
And that that's why I like the Army as much as I did. Yeah. Then when we got in those tanks full time, why, well, um, I couldn't beat it. You enjoyed your time yeah. as a tank commander. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. And I enjoyed enjoyed my time as a merchant seaman, yeah. steering that ship in those terrible North Atlantic waters. Uh, horrible, horrible. But steering that ship, trying to keep it on your course, you know, just beating that wheel back and forth. Yeah, it was good, good life. And you were very young doing it too. Oh so yeah, it's, yeah. It's, it's, yeah, I was a teenager there in the Merchant right. Marine. It's a totally different time. Yeah, I, mean, when I, I, I was growing up in the, I was up in my 20s in the Army. Yeah. And went to Fort, Fort Hood, or Fort Knox, Kentucky, to, 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 to the uh, Marine Corps, uh, uh, the Army Tank School. Right. Uh, the same school that Eisenhower went, and MacArthur as well. In fact, my assigned seat was in uh, MacArthur's uh, seat had his name on it, and and uh, the other president uh, had his name on on his his seat where they sat. Yeah. And you were assigned a seat every class every class you went to you were assigned a seat, and that's where you sat. And just so happened, uh, somebody said behind me they see the name on it. You're from MacArthur's seat. I said, how do you know? <laughs> well, names on it there, dummy. <laughs> <laughs> uh, it's good life, I yeah. tell you. I, I'd I'd live it again. Same yeah. thing, just over and over. What's the most memorable time about your service? Be it merchant marines or army? Oh, Do you have one time that's more memorable than the other. Yeah, merchant, really. Yeah. Uh, in that Mexican jail. Of course, I got in a jail in Germany too. Uh, you good know. Jail in Germany. Yeah, FBI uh, military police arrested me. What did you do? Uh, in and off, uh, off uh, place shouldn't be. Uh, the the underground in Germany was so great, the underground, and and they would take a week after their after they had these meetings, and everybody was supposed to get a Westerner, a German or a American, a Italian, a English, a French, anybody, and kill them. And and uh, man, if they could get two. That'd be wonderful. They and 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 they they had these places in these beer joints, especially was their place of headquarters. And uh, when I was in Germany, on this one trip, you could go anywhere. Well, when we left, the 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 underground started doing their thing, killing people. Americans, they they caught they caught a bunch of GIs. In a tavern and killed them all, and it did. Boy, it barely made news in America, because they didn't want the people to know it. And uh, but it's 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 on records. It's it's true. So the next time I went to Germany, just two months later, everything was off limits to to me. Everything, and any any American, you couldn't take your foot off the street onto the sidewalk. And they caught you. You was, you was, so we goes into this beer joint where we was at the other trip. <laughs> right. He told us, "Say you guys got to go." No, we're not. We want some beer. You know, we want to have a good time. Where's the women at? You know. And uh, so he went right to phone call the MPs. It wasn't a couple of minutes, so there come the MPs. <laughs> and they had one little jeep, two MPs, one little jeep. But five of us in that jeep hauled us away, and the one said, "Just hang on, you guys are going to Hooskow," and they did. They took us to Hooskow, all of us in one little jeep. We sat on top of each other. <laughs> that was that was one of the most memorable things, and getting hauled into that army headquarters, and of course, at that time I wasn't out of army. I didn't know nothing about army then. <laughs> Oh, that was that was that was fun after it was over. Right. They showed us movies and a few other things and showed us horrors and it was they had arrested and all this, you know. And they were they were there they had women right there in their prison where they'd arrested right. for being with uh, GIs or whatever. Yeah. I don't know why they arrested them, but they were in the they we saw them. <laughs> and they got done with us. 
next day they sent us back to our ship. Don't go anywhere but on that ship. And they were doing this because it was unsafe. Oh yeah. To be there. Underground. The underground was terrible. Yeah. And we didn't know. I mean, I was stupid, but I didn't know. Yeah. I didn't know about German underground. But when I, when they, when they got done with us, we knew. <laughs> Well, I gotta go. <laughs> I got family out there waiting on me. A couple more questions, real quick. So, looking back on your time in the Merchant Marines and the Army, how do you think that shaped who you became? How did it? How did it make you who you are today? Well, I was an old farm boy when I first went, and I didn't know nothing but behind a pair of horses. Yeah. And. Uh, I just didn't. I just didn't believe that world that was out there. I just couldn't believe it. Yeah. And when I started going to other countries, Mexico, Cuba, Canada, then then across Italy, France, Belgium, Holland, Newfoundland, all those places, Poland, Norway, Sweden, Finland. Uh, I I just and, and met people. It, it changed my whole life, meeting people, the, the, the nice people in Norway and, and Finland and, and, and places. It was just so good. And it, it, it made me, and, and, and that American flag, I just couldn't believe that American flag. We'd go into a port on a merchant ship. You had to fly their flag amidships. You had to do it, it was law, I mean. And and every when you, when you went to a foreign country, you had their flag on that ship. In fact, most ships had fifty flags on. Them. Yeah, that fifty was didn't know where he was going. You know. and you'd fly their flag, and a fantail was our flag. And I look back at the fantail and see those stars and stripes, and look up that they had their flag on the foremast. I said, man, I'm sure glad I don't live under that flag. I wouldn't want. I wouldn't want to fly that flag, but I fly American flag 24 hours a day at my house, yeah. every day. And if that flag gets torn, I take it down and put a new one up. Every day, I have for years. i 40 years. I flew a flag. That American says stars and stripes mean more to me than anything I own because it is such a symbol. It's. Uh, so good last question for you somebody might watch this video a young man or a young woman what advice would you give them well I would say be true to America be an American salute that flag I salute my flag for God so loved the world that he gave this only son and we live in that beautiful, beautiful country. It's so good. I, I've seen so many countries. I've seen the horror. I've seen the horror that we did to Germany. The horror we did to Italy. The, 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 the towns that were leveled. No docks for ships. You had to anchor, you had to anchor out and they'd come out in little boats and take their cargo. And I, I saw that. It's still in my mind. Those horrible cities that thousands and thousands of people were burnt, burnt up in those houses. And the Americans and the British bombed places in Germany, cities in Germany that only people lived in them. They didn't, it wasn't the factories, it, it wasn't shipbuilding places. It was where people lived. They did it for the purpose of getting the ones that were left to hate Hitler enough to overthrow him didn't work. We still had to kill him to get him. But that's what, that was their purpose. And, and stand there in, in Bromhaven and look and can't see a one building stand in the whole city. Horrible. Just horror. We don't want that to happen here. Love your country. Love your country. That's great advice. Love your country. Well, sir, on behalf of the Americans of Wartime Experience, thank you very much for sitting down and talking to us, and uh, thank you for your service. Thank I you. love America.